Hello student, welcome back to your physics teacher. And in today's lesson, we're looking at section 11.1 .1 from the Nelson textbook. And I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that are gonna be useful to you. And I'm gonna be able to explain them in more detail so you get a better understanding as well. Starting off with question number two, we have a car battery transfers 19,200 joules of energy to the starter in two seconds when you turn the key to start the engine. Calculate the power of the starter. So let's write down quickly while we're given this question. So we have that there's an energy transfer of 19,200 and if you recall the transfer of energy which is delta E is our definition of work. So the work is the transfer of energy so you can get from this sentence that they're giving you the value of the work, which is the change in energy, delta E. And the two seconds, that's the time interval that this is taking place, the delta T. And they want us to calculate the power. If you recall, we have a formula for power. Power is going to be the work over the change in time. And we could put that in notation as W over delta T. But again, work is the transfer of energy, so we can just put that as delta E over the change in time. And at this point, all we have to do is just put in the value that we were given to calculate it. Notice that in this case, the units are correct because we measure the change in energy in joules and the change in time in seconds. So the power should be in joules per second, which is the watts. So once you calculate this, you get approximately 9,600 watts. For question number three, we have a 1,200 watt microwave oven transforms 1.8 times 10 to the power 5 joules of energy while reheating some food. Calculate how long the food was in the microwave. Answer in minutes. So we have the power rating in this case of the microwave. So the power is 1,200 watts. And this microwave is used to transform 1.8 times 10 to the power of 5 joules of energy. And just like we saw before, transforming energy is the same thing as delta E, which is our definition of work. And since they're asking us to calculate how long the food was in the microwave during this energy change, we're going to have to use a power formula and we're going to rearrange it for the change in time. Power is the work over the change in time. If we're talking about the electrical energy, delta E over delta T. To isolate for the change in time, first we multiply both sides by the change in time. And then we divide both sides by the power. Right, so what I put there in white, uh, that's being applied to both sides of the equation. And at this point, let's put in the values and see what we got. First, we do a quick check on the units. And we have joules, which are the SI units, and we have watts, which are the SI units. So in this case, we are, are able to just plug it in. And we get 150 seconds. But if you recall, the question actually wanted us to answer this in minutes. So we need to convert the seconds into minutes. So 
So in order to convert, we want to cancel out the units of seconds, so we put 60 seconds in the bottom for every one minute. We do this calculation and we approximately get 2.5 minutes. For question number four, we have a plasma television requires 380 watts to operate. A family watches television for 110 hours in one month. Calculate how much energy is needed and they want this answer in joules and kilowatt hour. So let's try to figure out what information they were given so that way we can use the information in our calculations. So we have that the TV requires 380 watts to operate and this is the power rating so that's the power and the time that they spend watching in one month is 110 hours this would be the change in time so it looks like they're asking us to calculate how much energy is needed so the unknown in this case is the change in electrical energy so the relationship that we're going to use is the power equals to the change of electrical energy over the change in time. We want to rearrange for just the electrical energy. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the change in time. And notice that they're asking us to calculate this in kilowatt hours and also to calculate it in terms of joules. So let's break this down into two different calculations. The first one is going to be in kilowatt hours and the second one will be in joules. So both of them are going to use the same formula, it's just when we put in the units, the units are going to be used differently. So for the kilowatt hours, we want power times the change in time, but the power is 380 watts, and the change in time has to be in hours, so it's 110. So let's do this calculation. So right now, we are going to have the units of watt hour so to get it in kilowatt hour we're going to we're going to divide by a thousand because there's a thousand in a kilo so that will give us 41.8 kilowatt hour now instead if we wanted to answer this in joules it's still the same formula change in electrical energy is power times the change in time but the only thing is that we now need to do a side conversion of hours into seconds because that's going to be the SI unit so we get joules in there so we're going to first convert hours into minutes there's 60 minutes in one hour and then we're going to convert minutes into seconds there's 60 seconds in one minute so a quick way to think about this is that the units cancel out you see hours hours cancel out and then minute minute will cancel out so doing this calculation you should get that there's approximately 3900 96,000 sorry seconds let's put in our value here for seconds and now we have the SI units we have watts which are joules per second times second which are just going to give us joules at the end so let's do this calculation 
and we suspect that it's going to be a really large number. And it is. So to put this in scientific units, let's see how many zeros we're going to have to include. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight placeholders. So we can write this in scientific notation as 1.505 times 10 to the power of 8 joules. And the last question in this section, question number five. How much television does the family in question four watch in a year? So that's the one from before we just did. So they want to find out how much television does the family watch in a year. Calculate how much energy is needed to power the television annually. Answer in joules and kilowatt hours. So from before, we were given the change of energy to be 41.8 kilowatt hours. And this was done in one month. So in a year, there are 12 months. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our change in energy that is required for one month of watching TV and then we're going to multiply it by 12 because the energy that we found was per month so we'll multiply it by 12 months, we're going to get it in a whole year. So 41.8 kilowatt hour times 12. This gives us 501.6 kilowatt hours per year. So again, these units are really strange because they're measuring energy, not in joules, but in kilowatt hour. So this many kilowatt hours per year. So if you wanted to make a bit more sense, that's why they also wanted us to calculate this in terms of energy. We're gonna use the same reasoning, right? So the change of electrical energy, we had, it was 1.505 times 10 to the power of eight joules per month. So likewise, we're going to just multiply by 12. That way it gives us the joules in a year. And we got approximately 1.8 times 10 to the power of 9 joules. You can verify that for yourself. Great, so this is just an introduction to our electrical unit. We're going to be looking at more examples, eventually into circuits and then magnetism. So you might want to hit subscribe, that way you stay tuned and learn more with your physics teacher. Until next time.